Hello, and welcome to a Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge. Today, we're going to be checking in this game right here. Now, one of the things we have to do here at the hotel before we check in a game is to see what's in it. So, Cardboard Coat Check is my silly name for what we are doing, our unboxing videos. Today, we are going to be unboxing the super hot Cthulhu Death May Die. This is the latest game from Eric Lang, famous for games like Blood Rage, uh, Chaos in the Old World, Rising Sun, and so on. Also by Rob Davio. Rob Davio is possibly not as well known, but he is the man behind Legacy Games. He created Risk Legacy. Pandemic Legacy he worked on. He did um, Seafall. So that's a couple of the two biggest names in the gaming industry, working on probably the biggest name in horror, Cthulhu. So we are going to take a look at this box. First off, though, I have to give out a shout out. This game is sitting here due to Solon Wong of Tabletop Renaissance, the latest game store here in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Solon kindly donated this game for me to open up, to play, review, and talk about, to drum up buzz about the game. So thank you very much for that, Solon. No other compensation was provided. If you think that impacts my view of or opinion of the game, that's up to you to decide. Personally, I try to be as impartial as I can, and I've been getting review copies of games for quite a bit of time now, and... I don't think it impacts my final decision, but that's up to you to decide. Watch my other content. You can decide what you think. So again, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, normally here to answer your gaming and game night questions. Of course, the question tonight is what's in the box. You can find my content at tabletopbellhop.com, where you'll find answers to other people's questions that have been sent in. Most recently, we didn't ask me anything, but before that, we talked about um, ways to raise money for charity through gaming. So that's our most recent topic. You can find other stuff like that over on the blog. But that's enough of that. I am going to get to opening this box. I'm going to tilt the camera down so you can see the box better. You guys don't need to see my mug anymore. And we'll hopefully take a look at what's in this box. So the run reason I like to do this live, I am actually recording this here live on Twitch. Uh, for those of you here on YouTube, thank you for watching that way. And for those of you here live on Twitch, it's awesome that you're checking it out. All right, so... Um, I like to do these live so you can see my thoughts. The one thing I got to point out, I don't know how you can see this on the camera, but the eyes on Cthulhu are reflective and it's actually really neat and it's a really neat effect. Yeah, it's not really coming across in the video. No, no, not coming across in the video. Uh, it does have that gloss effect on the label. That's a nice touch. And here we go. Seeing what is in this box. All right. Some really nice art along the edges here. I dig that. I think you got your characters here. I apologize for the glare. We'll tip that down just a little bit. Some creepy art here. You get the clear glowing eye effect there. And some more character style art here. I'm gonna turn this back to here. So the first thing we have is what look like character cards. We're gonna open this up. I'll flip through these. Nice solid cards. It has a rule summary on here. So on your turn, you're gonna take three actions. You're gonna draw a mythos card. You're gonna investigate or fight, and then you're gonna resolve end of turn. I gotta say already, it sounds kind of like a Mansions of Madness or um, trying to remember the other big Cthulhu game, Eldritch Horror, Arkham Horror, any of those. I will admit, I, I did not back this Kickstarter. I, I know there was hype out there for it. So I haven't done any research on this game. I know nothing about the gameplay. So what you're going to hear about today is just the component quality. There is a nice stack of characters. This is a nice thick stack. So we have Adam. We have Rasputin. We have Elizabeth. It's nice to see a female person of color in the game. We have Fatima. We have Ahmed. We have Borden. Is that supposed to be Lizzie Borden? She does have an axe. We have Ian, who is an amputee. Again, bonus points for representation. We have the kid, who note she has fire coming out of her hands. We have Morgan, and we have Sister Beth. It's quite the range of characters. I like to see the diversity I see there. On the back, there is a description of each character as well as some artwork. I'm not gonna bother reading any of these off, but I will flip through them quickly. I'm not going to waste a lot of time looking through these, but all right, 
and I'm just going to put these on the table behind here. We have rule book, not too thick, which is good because I'm hoping, oh, we have multiple rule books. No, this is something else. Okay, so we have a rule book, not too thick, not too thin, which is good because I'm hoping to learn this game for Saturday. 19 pages. You're going to see this as I see it. Contents, lots of color, full color. Black text on white, thank you. I really hate when companies do light text on dark background. Overview, lots of examples here. There's the big guy himself. Big one, big it, big thing. Definitely have some type of modular board. There's obviously going to be miniatures in here. Interestingly, it looks like even the skill levels are tracked with miniatures. That's kind of interesting. Artwork solid. Dice and checks. Of course, we're going to have custom dice. Because, you know, you can't have a modern board game without custom dice. Looks like plenty of examples. Plenty of graphics. Looks like a solid rule book. I couldn't tell you how it's read. Again, I have no idea how to play. So, of course, cards. Because, again, this type of game is going to be card-driven. You're going to draw things from decks. I don't know what that is, but that's kind of creepy. Ending the game. So all of this, all the way to the end, goes right to ending the game. So this isn't one of those where half the rule book is fluff. There's definitely a, this is a chunk of rules. There is an index. Again, thank you. Thank you, Cool Mini or Not. Sorry, we are super glaring all of a sudden. All right, I don't know what this is. Thick card. Oh, it's probably like the monster track would be my guess. Some kind of tracker. Disappointingly thin, but you got to say, these are, these are getting more and more common in games. It's that super paper thin. I would love something a little thicker. This is the kind of component I'd be tempted to, to um, laminate. And, of course, punch boards. Not nearly as many as I thought. Oh, and sure enough, Rob Davio was involved. There's boxes. There's boxes to open. The Legacy Master has put boxes in this game. Man, that might be rough to play at uh, Extra Life. So we're going to punch out this. Well, I'm not going to punch it. Sorry. I'm going to open this. Let's see what's in here. All right. I am impressed, first of all, just with this room. Check that out. That is really cool looking. Very clear where the doorways are. These are small. Wow. Little tiny rooms. Sorry about the glare. I'm going to move that down a bit here. And we got a bunch of tokens, fire, hearts. Who knows? Two-sided, of course. Different rooms on this side. That's a neat looking place. There's, there's rituals that have happened there before. Ooh, the tunnel. The creepy tunnel. I could see using this stuff for an RPG. Ooh, these, the punch boards are nice. Like, stuff's falling out while I'm holding these. That's actually a good thing in my opinion. I love that cave. We got some cards here that look like skill cards. We got Stealth, Marksman, Toughness, Swiftness. We're going to flip this one over. And again, hopefully nothing will fall out. We got indoor and outdoor locations. These would be great tiles for an RPG, seriously. A little small, like for 25 millimeter miniatures, but if you just wanted to set a scene. I personally don't tend to run Call of Cthulhu style games, but some nice stuff here. I don't know. This, this has got to be like the entrance way. Oh, look at the nice twisty stairs. It's a nice touch. Some nice stuff there. More rooms on the back. You got a graveyard. Never go to the graveyard. We got a whole other set here. There's quite a few punch boards. Wow, this looks very impressive. Very impressive tiles. All right. Um, I don't know what I can show you here. This is the problem with unboxing something that may be a legacy game. I don't want to spoil anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these minis. Okay, what do we got? Now, see, that is sealed. Huh. How much can I unbox? And how much can't I unbox without giving something away? So what I am going to do is take a quick look at the rule book. First, we'll take out what's in here. So you got that. We got a bunch of boxes. These boxes say episode one, two, three, four, five, six. All say season one. So they're expecting multiple seasons of this game. I am definitely not opening any of these, but it, oh, actually it does tell you contents of the box. Again, just in case there's spoilers, I'm worried about opening this. This looks like it might be done more like um, the Harry Potter Hogwarts battles, more than, say, Risk Legacy. So this says it has an episode card, magnate cards, mythos cards times eight, five labs, four, 13 fire tokens, and 15 discoveries. What's worse than cultists? Cultists have set the place on fire. 
Another night and another damn ritual to summon an elder god. If we blow up their labs, we can cause a lot of trouble from whatever it is they are summoning. So yeah, that's episode one. What I am going to do after this, though, is I am going to take a quick minute to grab the rule book to see what I should and shouldn't be doing here. Okay, this isn't, like, sealed, is it? It is. <sighs> Again, I'm worried about spoiling this. So then we have Cthulhu, a big box. This says contents again, Elder One, Stage Cards, Mythos, Minions, Cthulhu, Relay Times Nine, and Star Spawn. So we'll just hold this up so you can see it this way. And then we have a separate box for Haster. And I gotta say, this is very, um, very uh, Kickstarter. Like, I could see them be more boxes of these. All right, I apologize for the glare here. There we go, contents of the box. We're gonna try something. Let's see if this is better. So I figured the light was probably better, but it doesn't have any legacy elements or core scenario cross scenario progression. Okay. Oh no cross scenario progression. That's enough to kill the game for me. It meets in the zombicide where you play the mission and it means nothing. So at the start of each game, you're gonna choose an episode box and an elder one box, combine the two and play. Do not combine elements from other boxes. So yeah, stand alone. I, I gotta say, I'm already not impressed. I hate that about Zombicide. Zombicide would be so much better game if you just progressed, if your characters actually got better. All right, so I am gonna epi open episode one then to show it off. So we're gonna start off with the season one, episode one box. Let me know again if, like I still think that light should be back on because that's really dark now. All right, so contents of episode one, we do have punch boards. So we have a flame token punch board. We have some, oh, I don't even know what these are. Major Explosion, Major Explosion, Safe Collapse, Inferno, and Inferno. So those are like bad things that are going to happen on those tokens. We have some nice, almost tarot-sized location cards, which on the back have monsters. Yeah, it's because this is dark stuff, we're going to toss the light back on. It's just going to take a second. All right. There we go. Once I once I get the angle so I'm not getting the glare, you can really see artwork there. Creepy looking. Um, so that has the monsters on the back. And then we have a scenario card, which I'm not there's lots of detail on there. Um, and one along with that is you have a map. There's more stuff in here. Um, we have two decks. You know what? Again, I'm gonna open one. I'm just gonna open scenario one. And then I'm gonna open Cthulhu. I'll leave Haster for people to discover on their own. <laughs> There's a sentence I never thought I'd say. So these are Mythos cards. There's a set of them. They are showing various monsters. These are both the same. There's something different. Chaos in the lab. Students go mad. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's Cthulhu stuff. This is amusing, isn't it? Decent enough looking cards. Not a lot of art. Zabiaki. Monsters in the lab. So these are obviously events that are going to happen during the scenario. And then we have these cards. This is the episode Blasphemous Academy Season 1, Episode 1 Discovery Cards. So they got Rob Davio involved to give him a bunch of boxes and set up different scenarios where the boxes work different ways. But it doesn't actually have a legacy element. So these are all the same on this side. But this side shows a whole bunch of text. Again, the white on the black on the light off might be better. I don't want to keep turning the light on and off. That's just annoying. All right, there is black text here. Just believe me. All right, we're going to stick with one camera type for the next one so you can see this better. So you got a bunch of text on here. Uh, not very visually appealing. Uh, condition guilty conscience. I should have done something. Feral student. She only makes vague simian noises. You may take too stress to claim the feral student. If you do not, claim the guilty conscience. This is a companion student Margot. So these, oh wow. Oh, they, these are NPCs. So you have an assistant janitor. You have a janitor. Oh no, it's not just there. So there's NPCs. There's up to no good. The professor, he asked me to help. If I'm not in trouble, am I? The student holds a beaker. If you have a guilty conscience, take one stress. You may take two stress to claim the grad student or or the beaker. So these are kind of like events mixed with NPCs. 
This is your story mode with two options on each card. And there are quite a few of these in this one deck. So that is everything that came in scenario number one, box number one. We're going to slide all this back together. In a way, I'm glad that it's it's not campaign-based just for what I want to do with it this weekend, because I really want to show this game off. But I'm disappointed just for overall gameplay. Like, I can't stand Zombicide, because you go through all this work to finish this mission to, say, get this rare weapon, and then you start the next mission clear and free. I find that very annoying. I like RPG-style games where you actually progress the plot and get something. Actual campaign games. We have a whole podcast about campaign games and the difference between campaign games and scenario-based games. This is a scenario-based game. And this does come with six scenarios. Now, you get to combine these six scenarios with your choice of Elder God. So you can do Haster or you can do Cthulhu. We're going to open up the Cthulhu box just to see what's in here. I'm expecting a big miniature, if nothing else. So inside, we do have a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to hold this over by the camera. So we have a deck of Mythos cards, very similar to what was in the other set. We have a nice Cthulhu deck. There we go. No glare. Um, yep, minions of Cthulhu deck. We have some tokens, which are the relay tokens in the back of the box. And we, have, of course, have Cthulhu himself with a minion. we got to get this miniature out, of course, because it's as cool mini or not. One of the things everyone cares the most about are how beautiful the miniatures are. This one's probably going to have some tape somewhere. Once I find it, get tape off. There we go. All right, props to Cool Mini or Not for one thing. No assembly required. That is a pretty badass looking Cthulhu. It's not huge. I've seen Reaper minis that were bigger. Reaper versions of Cthulhu, but that is a nice looking mini. I think you can see that. Come on, focus here. And we have a star spawn to go with him, which is a mini creepy Cthulhu, basically. Nice looking. You can tell they were multi-part miniatures at first and have been assembled. That's a pretty mini. Well, pretty being a relatively... <laughs> Possibly the wrong term, actually, when talking about Cthulhu miniatures. But that is a well-made, good-looking miniature. All right. Now, can I get the lid back on? Not easily. Because of the tape on the other side. All right. So, we're going to put Cthulhu back in his box. And, of course, you also get Haster. Um, that's what you get in the Haster box. I'm not going to take it out. Personally, I'd rather fight Haster. Cthulhu's old hat. Haster's much more interesting. We're going to take a quick look at these Cthulhu cards. Minions of Cthulhu, one of which is Cthulhu. It says Stage 1 on this top card, so there's going to be various stages. Uh, no, it's when Cthulhu advances, put a relay token on your space. If there's already a token there, put it in the nearest space that doesn't have one. Summon a cultist on each relay space. Move the star spawn one space towards you. If it's not on the board, summon it. So, we have stage one. Uh, I'm assuming these are That says stage three. That's uh, final stage. They're stage two. They're slightly stuck together. Slightly stuck together. Art's all the same on these cards. They each have something different going. I see health points. Eventually, I just see minions being summoned. So, once you defeat Cthulhu, it looks like, you're going to have some minions that keep showing up. Or maybe these are the cultists. Yeah, these are the stats for the cultists and the star spawn. So what you do in this game, you pick one Elder God and you pick one scenario and mix and match. So you got some smash up going on. All right, so similar to the ones in the other deck, you have a bunch of events. So you have a star spawn is summoned. You got Ray Relay unleashed. You have various effects going on here based on the Mythos deck. And we had the punch outs. I'm not going to punch them. Two-sided symbols on it. All right, what do we got next? We got more minis. That's pretty much what's left in this box. So we're going to put this back here. We're going to take a look at these. Now, I don't know about, enough about Cthulhu, but that might be a really, really gross shove nigger off. We're going to see if light helps here. The goat with a thousand young. 
That is a big maw right there. That that's it wants to eat you. Yeah, creepy big mini. And this is the neatest looking one. I have no idea what that is. But man, that is a sweet looking miniature. I would not want to paint that, I gotta admit. That's way too many small details and hard to reach places. Really nice looking miniature there though. All right, and underneath these, we have more. All right, we have two of the same creepy things. Actually, they'll show off really good with the back background. So I am gonna leave them there for a second. And I'm gonna take one out and show you the other side, which probably isn't all that interesting. Yep, gross ass elder god things. So those stack, I am, for Cool Mini, I'm impressed by this packaging. It's better than their usual. It's not a bunch of just clear plastic that once you take it out once, you never get back together. So that's gonna go right there with the shiny lid. All right, this thing. Oh, we have more cards, cards right on top. All right, what do we got? Patient medical files. Character cards of some sort, I'm assuming. All right, uh, these all look the same on this side, and at the start of the game, knowing a chorus, a codependent investigator. If your codependent is alive, but not in your space, then take two stress. Then either move, then move either of you to the other space. So I don't know when these come up. These, oh, these are insanities. You can't have a Cthulhu game without insanities. Nice art. I'm impressed by that. I need to find a happy place with the lights in my house. I'm gonna show off some of the artwork here. It's decent. What is that one? That is obsessive disorder. So we have a bunch of insanity cards. Put those aside. I'm gonna slide this sleeve off of here. And I betcha I'm about to encounter tape yet again. All right, character minis. Decent looking character miniatures. All right. We have a ton of characters. Give this one more try. Oop, right. There we go, you can kind of see them there. I don't think I'm gonna pull each of these out. I'm sure if you go online, you can see pictures of all these. As usual, cool mini or not, really, Solid miniatures, really nice looking nun here. Always impressive. We have the custom dice and the usual player color things that are gonna snap on the bottom of the miniatures. We'll throw this on this character just to kind of show you. You snap the base on the bottom. Then we know that's Blue's character. Got green and black dice. Green dice have uh, Elder Sign, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, and Elder Sign. Rest other sides are blank. It's a green. Black have tentacles. Elder Sign, exclamation mark, tentacles, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, and blanks. So different odds, and there are no tentacles on the green dice. So I have to assume the green ones are better than the black ones. That's it for dice. There we go. Nice looking minis. Oh, look at the focus. Thank you, camera. And look at these. These are the counters to track your stuff. Most games would give you cubes. This game gives you tentacles. It's gross. Little tentacles to keep track of all your stuff on your store card. So these are in player colors. Uh, looks like the player colors are pretty um, colorblind friendly from what I understand of it. The reds and greens are different enough. The green's more neon. Got a whole bunch of these. We got flyy things. I don't know. Mikey Thulu monsters. We got other things with wings here. Again, the detail is fantastic. Creepy, really creepy minis. Hey, and something that tells you how to put the minis away. That's a bonus. Bonus. Good move. Cool mini or not. All right. We have obvious cultists. Cultists, 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 and I'm guessing like deep ones. Again, really impressive looking minis. Family members who can't stay quiet. All right, 
I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the minis. I'm impressed with the component quality. I love the maps. I hate, hate, hate the fact it's not actually a campaign game. When I saw Rob Davio, I was expecting, like, legacy game. Like, your characters go mad permanently and game, you mark up the cards. And, oh, I'm disappointed. I am honestly disappointed. Bringing the box back. Big box. We got all our scenarios. We got this, which I think is just no real good purpose, but I guess it'll hold this on while we're transporting the game once I figure out which angle this goes at. Look at that. All right. Yeah, Rob Davio made a non-legacy game with Eric Lang. It has boxes. It's got some neat looking stuff like it's going to unlock. I'm going to keep this out just because I want to read this and I want to play this on Saturday, hopefully. All right. Rule book would go here. Everything fit back in nice. That doesn't always happen. Nice art on the box. Fantastic looking. Again, I'm personally keeping the rule book out for my own sake. We're going to put this lid back on. Air is slowly escaping like air from a tomb. All right. That was Cthulhu Death May Die from Cool Mini or Not. Came by Rob Davio, Eric M. Lang. Personally, Bellhop's opinion, fantastic looking game. As usual, Cool Mini or Not, amazing looking components. You can't really get better than Cool Mini or Not for component quality. Great looking game. I really like the tiles. The quality is there, except for that one board was a little bit thin, but that's fine. It's it's To be honest, there's lots of games with that problem. Uh, even games I played recently that were deluxe editions had the thin boards. Um, just, I'm bummed that it's not a campaign game. Especially with having Rob Davio involved. So we'll see. Maybe it's good enough. Maybe it's amazing and you sit there and you love Scenario 3 and you do really good at it. So you want to try it with a different god. I do like the smash up concept of being able to take, pick a scenario and then pick one of the Elder Gods. Base set comes with six scenarios and two Elder Gods. I don't know my math, but I think that six to the times six should give you 36 different ways to play. I, I may be off on my uh, probabilities. I might, might be right, might be wrong, but whatever. It's a lot of ways to play, so that's pretty cool. So thank you for watching this Cthulhu Death May Die unboxing video. Um, I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. Before you go, make sure you hit that subscribe or follow button. And make sure you head over to tabletopbellhop.com and check out our webpage where we've got other unboxing videos, actual play videos, reviews, news, and where we answer your gaming questions. If you do have a question for the Bellhop, send that to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Finally, one little thing I do have to mention. If you enjoyed this, it would be awesome if you headed over to patreon.com and considered tipping your Bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo. Good night and game on.